that has provided uh, enough uh, food for a good discussion before coffee. So please, I open up the floor for any questions and comments. Right in the middle. If you could uh, maybe briefly introduce yourself, it would be nice. Yes, Ma Ma Martin Morton, mm -hmm. University of Liverpool. Mm -hmm. um, I work with the Met Office uh, quite a bit with you, Jay, and I'd just like your response to this question. How confident are you that that particular climate model mm -hmm. can accurately predict in the future what the Indian monsoon will do? Not very. Thank you very much. <laughs> because the experience that I have working with them is you need an ensemble of 15 model outputs before you get yeah. an even remotely accurate prediction of the Indian monsoon. Yeah. The uncertainties associated with that really raise enormous questions about how you can be confident in predicting what might happen. But it worries me enormously, I have to say, to see the see the generalizations that are coming out because it implies confidence which I'm not convinced is warranted. So I'd be respond, you know, interested to see what you do. Well I'll, I'll quickly that. comment on that and I, I, I thought I had stressed this enough, but I'll stress it again in that we realize we're only running this with one climate model, but we simply do not have the time and capacity to do anything else at this stage. Across all the models Rainfall is the, the big sticking point. There is no model that has any uh, good, as I understand, physical understanding of the rainfall patterns. Uh, we're certainly not giving this information out with an with idea of confidence and accuracy. Uh, what we do want to say is that this may represent one possible plausible future climate. I'm not going to say that this is the future climate. I don't think anyone would dare to stand up and say such a thing. Uh, but what we do want to do is to try and see what information we can use um, to come up with some form of plausible future yield, yield potential in this case. But I, I completely agree with the, um, the uncertainty um, in this kind of modeling. Uh, we simply don't have the options to do anything more comprehensive at this stage because the time and effort required to do just one model for this area has been actually way beyond what we initially anticipated. And it goes back to a lot of the other institutes in the region who have actually done this kind of modeling, but for whatever reason we were unable to share that information with them. Um, and I would like to think that this situation would improve in future because we're not going to be able to do what you just described in terms of ensemble modeling across this type of scale, unless we do share this kind of information more freely. Okay, we have one here and then there. Uh, I'm Ian Roth from India. Just I want to ask uh, Dr. Reiter, did you involve farmers to understand these research needs in fixing their research priorities for the future? Uh, I think you... Get a microphone, please. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a lot of. Uh, is it? Okay. Uh, the, you will you'll find out about the methods that you're using, what that we're using in the subsequent presentation. So, I, I'd encourage you to, to stay away for those. Uh, there, there's a lot of uh, there is a lot of farmer input embedded in the methods that we've used, uh, but it, it's not directly based on uh, farmer interviews per se, asking them what the priorities are. But you'll find out that it is uh, using information sources that are based on, on data collected from farmers. You, you've seen the example of uh, Aliyu de Agne before, and uh, I think uh, we have also for Asia a substantial database of uh, household level uh, information. Uh, and so I think it feeds indirectly into the process, yeah, but uh, uh, you need to still have a structured methodology that combines that household level or farmer information or feedback uh, with the more uh, generalized uh, biophysical information uh, of the kind that Andy has shown. Yeah. So it is, I think, indirectly part of the process. Yeah. What we have not done 
is like uh, what sometimes is being done, you know, uh, conduct like an e-consultation and ask people, what do you think are the 10 most important things? Yeah? Because that is very difficult to make any use of. Because you get, you ask 10 people the same question, you get 10 completely different answers. Because each of them uh, has a certain priority which is not balanced against the other ones. Uh, and the other problem that we have with this type of approach is that uh, it's a very biased sample of people who respond to that. So, so we're trying to combine different sources and the, what, what we believe at this stage uh, is a reasonably robust and objective approach, but of course knowing very well that uh, uh, many other stages of feedback will have to come into this at a certain point. Dr. Datta. Um, just to supplement uh, Martin's question actually, right? not a question but a, as a comment. Uh, just a few days back, we were having a meeting about stress uh, kind of uh, discussions, and the Minister Minister Charlotte Power was present in the discussions. And the Indian Meteorological Department was making a presentation and giving uh, even more elaborate than what you said, and uh, which is very nice. I enjoyed your presentation. Thank you. And then the, the Minister himself asked a question to the, the person we were presenting. Is monsoon stopped in India? Because still in India, monsoon rain, what rain is still going on. When it started, it was said that it was not a monsoon, it was something pre-monsoon. Mm -hmm. And even still continuing monsoon water and Andhra Pradesh again flooded. So that's the things what Martin just raised the question. I think it is a bit complicated, and for, but at the same time we need to understand these things and uh, to make it as much as possible, as often Norman mentioned, that combination of different parameters need to be put together. And even we do have in India now, uh, every week uh, there is a data coming, details data is coming. Still we could not uh, predict it correctly. Thank you. Um, I, I completely agree and it's rainfall which is the sticking point in all of these models. Uh, downscaling is particularly troublesome. Um, at the moment, we're, we're using the most advanced models that are out there and available to us uh, and working within the limitations that we have with those. Uh, that's about as much as I can add to that. It's probably well able to say that, uh, remind everyone that this particular piece, the projection of future climate and its implication in yield potential, is really only one piece of the whole exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we wanted to have it in there so that we have at least a general projection where our sort of major areas of change, if you wish. But I don't think we want to go down and uh, say uh, this pixel is going to behave differently than this pixel. Uh, because uh, we also know very well that the crop simulation models that we have uh, also have in inherent uncertainties, uh, particularly when it comes to simulating the interaction of CO2 and temperature and crop development and performance. Uh, there, there's another layer of uncertainty uh, which uh, that we are well aware of. Yeah. So I think we do want to put uh, uh, all our eggs <coughs> into the basket of these kind of simulations. Yeah. So I think, uh, but we still have some more time for more. Uh, there's a young lady there. Hi, Elizabeth Ryan. Wait, 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 wait for <laughs> So my question is, um, you know, in the plenary on day one, we talked a little bit about that we have, are producing enough for nine billion, and I'm wondering where the mapping is happening to the distribution issue, or the 1.4 billion million people where this yield is not reaching, and are you starting to work with anybody to integrate the distribution issues in the strategic planning process as well, or which of your working groups does that distribution fall into? Uh, I think that the first question whether do we have enough food for 9 billion people? That was a yeah. comment made by one presenter, and I have a serious question on that. The presenter says we have enough food for 9 billion people. No, I think I'm audible. I believe that too, actually. But David, you want to answer the, the, the distribution question? Yeah, again, I'd like to make a plug for the, the second. Uh, 
component of, of this uh, <laughs> symposium because uh, you'll, you'll learn more about how that's handled there. Uh, but basically what, what we're doing is, in terms of distribution, the, one of the major avenues in terms of uh, food uh, security is, is food affordability. And that's, that's what we're, we're modeling on the consumer side. So what, uh, what the actual effect would be on, on, farm, on rice prices for poor consumers and what that means in terms of uh, additional consumption that could be enabled. So we, we capture that distribution issue through the price issue. And really the matter, you, you can have any supply and demand equilibrium that you want. It's all reflected in what price you end up with there. Right, so it's not, it's not really a question, do you have enough food for, for nine billion people? It's a, it's a matter of at what price do you have food uh, that could be available because there will be substitution. So we, we reflect that in, in the price issue. Yeah, I'll, I'll, and if there is, I'll entertain one final question specifically on the spatial data, not on the other aspects of the process. Andy's presentation, if there is one question on that, I will take that. Uh, Randy Parker in the back there, I see. research priorities and resources. That's all we're trying to do. You take a look at how we've been doing this for 20 years within the CG system, we just say varieties is the problem. We may come up with something else like this gentleman was talking about Africa. We've done a monstrous work in Africa, it was presented very well. We assume variety is the problem. It's not variety, it's drought, it's peace. So we're at least trying to put a scientific method of assigning the world's resources on priorities. And you know, we may, may not be very accurate, but no one else is doing it. Good, uh, thanks. Uh, um, good, we'll break for, I don't think there is a response needed, right? Good, the coffee break will be back at 11 o'clock sharp, please.